Next will be the report and introduction by Mr. Arne Carson, Chairman of the RSM Lifelong Learning Hub. Ministers, Your Excellencies, colleagues, I'm happy to welcome all to this conference so generously hosted by Thailand. All over the world, we are concerned about the future of our children. We want the best in education and in work life for our children. We want to create the best systems that can support them in developing their full potential. But we used to say in adult education, if you want to see change in society in 20 years, then we have to invest in primary school because it takes 20 years before the children will grow up and influence society. If you want to see change, if you cannot wait for 20 years, if you want to see change in five years, then you have to focus on adult education, on upgrading, upskilling the competences that can work instantly, immediately. Children's education is still very important, but the saying gives us a reminder that if we want to see change, rapid change, to changing social or economical circumstances, then we need to be very much aware of adult education, or as we call it today, lifelong learning, as it involves much more than just adult education. <clears throat> Let me start with a small definition of lifelong learning. We used to identify lifelong learning with adult education. Then we identified it with continuing education and training. And we very much focused on continuing vocational education and training. We moved on to look at it as human resource development, updating of the qualifications, upskillings, and today I have found that in the cooperation between Asia and Europe, we very much agree, we have consensus about that lifelong learning is the integrated perspective of schooling, formal education, formal learning, of non-formal learning that happens outside of the formal school system that happens in workplaces, organizations, in companies, in non-governmental activities, in evening schools, and so on, and also of informal learning, the learning that happens when we speak with our friends, neighbors, and we're trying to get new knowledge from exchanging points of view, so from learning from each other. We have been developing lifelong learning policies recently in Europe and also now in Asia and between Asia and Europe. In 2007, the European Union made lifelong learning to the overall umbrella concept of all education programs. This means that studies that happens in the area of work and labor, higher education, primary education, and so on. Now, all is under the overall umbrella concept of lifelong learning. So we more or less agree that lifelong learning is all learning that happens from we can learn as small children till we are very, very old. 
It is primary education, secondary education, tertiary education, and it is everything that happens outside. It is lifelong, it is life wide. We have had cooperation among Asia and Europe in lifelong learning since the ASEM Summit number four that happened in Copenhagen in 2002. And I'm happy to say that the last ministerial meeting on education in Hanoi really put lifelong learning on the political agenda for cooperation among Asia and Europe. Today I think we can refer to this as the Hanoi paper or the Hanoi statement. That meeting happened in the months of May 2009, only two months ago. We have established uh, the Lifelong Learning Hub, the ASM Lifelong Learning Hub, as an organization that today has a council of university members with management members that has five research networks, and I think we have around 70 researchers involved in developing comparative Asian European research in lifelong learning. And we have an advisory board consisting of ministerial representatives so that we can have a platform, create a platform for dialogue between researchers and policy makers, between research and policy, between universities and ministries. We have established a secretariat. The ASM LLS secretariat is in the Danish School of Education in Aarhus University in Denmark, uh, where also lies the chairmanship at present. Let me point to the objectives as I see them of this conference. We are here, I think, in the, couple, in the next couple of days to share research results in two areas, e-learning and workplace learning. But in view of national, of regional, and of inter-regional capacity building. We are also here because we want to develop new knowledge through effective communication between researchers and policymakers. And the third objective of this conference is to engage more Asian ministerial representatives to expand the advisory board. This is the initiative of Thailand for which I am truly grateful. I mentioned that we have five research networks trying to develop comparative, comparative research, evidence-based research, so that we can give policy advice based on research. This is one of the ideas of the ASM Lifelong Learning Hub. Our first network number one is about e-learning. How do we develop ICT skills the best? What are our experiences in Asia, in Europe? The second is about workplace learning. How do we learn the best in workplaces? public and private workplaces. The third is about how do we create training for teachers who work in adult education or in continuing education and training or in human resource development. The fourth one is about motivation. How do we motivate people to engage in continuing education and training, how do we overcome the obstacles there are? Many people do not want to go back to school. They do not have the best school memories. How do we overcome these obstacles? And the last one is about the core competences of the future. What are the competences we have to develop in our school system and outside so we can have a prosperous economy, social cohesion, personal fulfillment, and so on. 
I am happy to be back here in Thailand with a conference in the uh, ASM Lifelong Learning Cooperation. We started in Thailand around 2002 when we first engaged into this initiative. We had a meeting, an international conference in Chulalongkorn University in Bangkok 2006, and now we are back here in 2009. So Thailand has been a motor in developing Asia-European cooperation in lifelong learning. I will end my uh, short introduction here by pointing to the fields of research that the ministries would like to see us work on. We have asked our advisory board with the representative from the ministries to define the most important research questions for developing education reform in relation to lifelong learning. And the feedback we got was five research questions. We need to develop a common understanding on the concepts of lifelong learning. That is why I started my introduction by trying to give a definition. We need more research about what works in relation to the role of initial vocational education and training and in continuing vocational education and training. And the third question, research question, we need building blocks of lifelong learning, creating systematic changes and supporting realization and lifelong learning. This is about guidance, recognition of non-formal and informal learning. It's about workplace learning. The fourth, fourth one was making learning more attractive. How do we make learning more attractive? With special regard to those who are not involved with learning or education. How do we motivate the learners? How do we make attractive courses? <clears throat> and so on. And the last one was about ICT. We as ministries are very keen about developing good learning environments in relation to ICT competences, e-learning, quality and certification. As you will see, these five research questions that we got back from the ministries are very well covered by the five existing research networks that we have. <clears throat> Before I end my introduction, I would like to thank the organizers for establishing this milestone in cooperation in LLL between Asia and Europe. Uh, Professor Supani Sombon Tam and her team from the Ministry of Education, and uh, Ms. Aria Raviti from, and her team from the Thai Ministry of Labor. Thank you. <clears throat>